Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Yamesh Gupta. Today we are going to solve a front-end interview question from Rippling's uh, front-end interview process. It's uh, one of the most sought-after companies uh, across the world. And this question was shared by one of the users of the DevTools Tech platform and it's also easily available on the web. So in this question, we have to build a asynchronous task runner with concurrency control. Now, I thought that this would be a good, uh, you know, problem statement to tackle because this talks about uh, asynchronous programming, uh, queuing, promises, and we'll try to see, you know, a particular edge cases or nuances around event loop that how that works in JavaScript. So let's take a look that what's the problem statement here. It says design and implement a task runner utility that processes asynchronous task with a maximum co concurrency control. So basically, uh, we have a task runner and some limit like let's say uh, this says the utility should ensure that at most a defined number of tasks are running at a, at any given time if more tasks are pushed into the queue uh, when the limit is reached they should wait uh, until at least one running task is completed before execution so the gist is that we have a task runner and a uh, concurrency limit so let's say we have five tasks and the limit is three so that means that at any given point we can run only three tasks and if one of the tasks is completed then we'll pick the next one we have done a similar question in the past but we'll try to do it with a different approach this time also this says that the this task runner exposes a method called push uh, that is going to push the task in the queue and it says that if the current number of running task is below the concurrency limit the task should be executed immediately okay and if the number of task is equal or exceeds the limit then uh, we should wait okay uh, so far so good so now let's talk about the arguments here we have the concurrency limit which we are passing to the constructor and we are the task which is the asynchronous function that needs to be executed so we are passing it here uh, if we see the return type then a push method does not return anything it just simply manage task execution okay and if we see the example here so we have a new task runner here and uh, we have these five tasks t1 t2 t3 t4 and this task there is a delay like 2000 millisecond 1500 and so on and if we see the execution here then one because the concurrency limit is three t1 t2 t3 are executed right away and t4 t5 waits and they are once they are completed we should see these logs so you don't have to worry about these logging that your method shouldn't log as in your solution should not log anything that is already taken care in the test cases i will i i gave you the gist that here is a task runner with a concurrency limit and but how exactly this works while we solve, we'll take a look at some dry, we'll try to dry run the code and see, uh, you know, how this is working, what is the logic behind it. So in the question description, we saw that we have multiple tasks. Let's say we are calling push T1. Let me copy this. We have push for T1, T2, T3, T4 and T5. And our concurrency limit is let's say three that means at any given point of time we can only execute three methods but these are called right away so this is synchronous that push are called in a synchronous manner but we can only execute three at any given time so our high level algorithm should be like that we need some sort of variable to track that how many tasks we are currently running and is that less than the limit so if running tasks let's say this variable is less than the concurrency means less than the limit then execute right away and this would be true for in our case t1 t2 and t3 else we will maybe store in a queue or have some wait mechanism this would be true for t4 and t5 and once that is done when three t1 is done then we'll pick t4 maybe so that depends on what's the delay here maybe t2 finishes first so when t2 finishes that means a slot is open and then we'll pick t4 now let's say t3 is done a slot another slot opens then we'll pick t5 
and for these we need to store it somewhere so let's implement this so we have the concurrency so we'll say this dot concurrency will store it we need some variable like I mentioned to track how many running tasks we have so we can say running task uh, maybe zero and then we have a queue you can call it task queue or you simply queue whatever you want to call it it's an empty array for now so like I mentioned this would be called in a synchronous manner right away so let's implement our push method we saw that uh, you know all the push calls are synchronous and uh, if running task is less than concurrency then we'll execute it right away so let's implement that so we have this dot running task if it's less than this dot concurrency then we are going to execute it so let's create a method called execute task and just execute and it will take a task and we are going to uh, we so when are we going when we are executing a task we need to increase the counter for running task so we are going to say this dot running task plus one and we are going to await for this task because it is asynchronous so this will make it async and we are going to say this dot execute task or execute and pass it here since this is also a sync we'll await for it and this makes a sync now this this takes care for t1 t2 and t3 because when it's t1 then our counter our running task will become one because currently it's zero and zero is less than three so this is true we'll execute it and make the running rt counter as one same for t2 like for t2 current rt is 1, 1 is less than 3, it is 2, so our rt will become 2, uh, rt here means running task, I am just using a short form, so when we come for t3, it will become 3, it is still, sorry, it is 2, 2 is less than 3, so our rt will become 3, so this takes care of our first if condition that we are executing it right away, now comes the part where we are Use, going to go in else where we have to store t4 and t5 because if we see this if when the request is for t4 r3 uh, is not less than 3 this is false same for t5 because these are synchronous call t5 and uh, this would become 3 only 3 less than 3 false so that means we need to store it so how are we going to do that in our else condition we are going to say this dot q dot push we are going to push the task and like I mentioned that whenever any of the executing task completes we open up a slot and we pick the next available task so how can we do that we'll just take this here because we want to do it when you know we are finally done executing this task we are not taking care of error condition here let's say if it's an error then it will propagate maybe we want we can just console log an error but right now we are not taking care of it so in the finally first we want to do is that our running task are three so when our any ta any of the task is done let's say t2 is done we want to open up a slot so we can do so by reducing the running task and we can say that if we have any available task q dot length and this dot running task is less than this dot concurrency then we will find the next available task this dot q dot shift because you know we had uh, t4 and t5 and this is a q so that is first in first out so we'll use shift and find out t4 and we'll just right away execute it so this is if we try to you know run this now we just see how what is our output so this is an asynchronous code so it will take some time for test cases to run so right now our test cases are failing it says task 1 started task 2 started task 3 started task 2 finished task 2 started task 3 started so we are having some sort of you know logic okay my bad because it's going to take task here not next next task not task let me run this again see 
see our test uh, our test case one is passing then test case two is also passing test case three is also passing test case four is also passing and test case five is also passing so all our test cases are passing i mean the solution was simple enough that we are you know just simply in pushing the task running it right away if it is less than the limit else we're pushing it into the queue there are many ways to do this question now let's we saw the test cases but how that they are passing but let's dry run it to see what exactly is happening so let me just close all this and let me paste a code snippet that i prepared earlier to give you a dry run that how this works so if we see that we have t1 which is going having a so this is just an artificial delay we create a new instance of the task runner we have t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 which which we are pushing into our executor or task runner and then this is the final log now t1 we have a delay of 2000 milliseconds for t2 we have 1000 for t3 we have 1500 t4 we have 1000 and t5 we have 500 so now if i run this code and show you what's happening here so we see that t1 start t2 t3 uh, t1 t2 t3 started right away then t2 finishes then t so when the slot open ups we pick up t4 and we start it then t3 finishes up so another slot opens up so we start t5 then finally based on the delay t1 t4 and t5 all are completed now if i see the t1 uh, these log let me just write down one more thing so this required 2000 this uh, well, the wait time i'm just writing the wait time 1000 for t3 we have 1500 and for t4 we have 1000 and for t5 we have 500 so our concurrency limit here is 3 so that means we'll run these three t1 t2 t3 right away okay and our rt counter will become three so after thousand milliseconds so the, these all three start at zero so after thousand milliseconds our t2 finishes because out of these three that t2 has the smallest time so t2 finishes our rt will become two and we pick t4 that means t4 wait time is 1000 and 1000 milliseconds and starts at 1000 okay now at 1500 milliseconds our t3 completes because you know from 0 to 1500 our t3 completes and for t5 starts so for t5 the wait time is 500 and starts at 1500 now when we come to t 2000 milliseconds after 1500 we come to 2000 milliseconds now at 2000 millisecond our t1 completes because t1 started at uh, you know the wait time was uh, 2000 and this was zero it started at zero and the current running time is 2000 milliseconds so the, this t1 execute finishes up and we prints it however so this started at uh, 1000 and the current time is 2000 that means and the wait that means 1000 milliseconds have passed and the wait time for t4 was also 1000 so and if we see t5 it started at 1500 and the current time is 2000 milliseconds and the wait time was 500 so that if we minus 2000 minus 1500 that is 500 that means at 2000 milliseconds uh, juncture we have three fun three functions that are completing t1 t5 and t4 now t1 it's the you know earliest one so it executes now we have t5 that is printed and then we have t4 that is printed so the you know one follow-up question which comes up here is that we see that in our output in our output t4 finishes first but i am saying that t5 if you see here 
I'm saying that T4 finishes first because at 2000 point we have T1, T4 and T5 and T1 was the oldest so it, uh, it is resolved first but among T4 and T5 sometimes it is T5 and sometimes it is T4. Both solutions are correct to be honest. Now it's up to you uh, or this would let's say this is a homework you tell me why sometimes it is t4 and sometimes it is t5 let me run this again to show you if you run it multiple times you right now let's see this is t4 finishes first if i run this again again t4 see now t5 is finishing first earlier it was t4 was finishing first so when two methods are finishing first then in the event loop it is hard to predict i mean our logic says that t4 was pushed first so it should and since it's a queue first in first out then t should should t4 should execute first but it depends on a lot of factors so this is a case where a lot of people miss when they explain this question that when two methods come because this uh, two methods complete at the same time as in the timeout then this says that the wait time was 1000 millisecond this says that wait time was 500 milliseconds this wait time doesn't mean that it will execute right away after 1000 milliseconds and this doesn't mean that it will execute right away after 500 milliseconds it is the minimum wait time that this will execute after 1000. It could be 1001, 1002 depending on what is event loop doing right now. So now that is why it is unpredictable that sometimes it T5 and sometimes it is T4. So if I run this again to show you then see it is T4 finishing sometimes it is T5. You find out the answer for this that why it is T4 sometimes and why it is T5 uh, sometimes and is there a way to make it consistent that we always get one before the other i mean there could be you know we can add some logic some additional delay maybe some we add some placeholder promises in our queue we you know change our queuing mechanism somehow that could be a question that would take this particular question to a next step maybe for like this question let's say is asked for sd1 and sd2 but so can we enhance the question to make it a bit tougher for to filter out you know uh, stronger candidates so that's a homework to you so this brings end to our video i hope you were able to learn something today and uh, you like the solution i provided if you feel that i missed out on something or something could have been done better then please do mention in the comments do reach out to me on social platforms like i mentioned at the start that there are multiple ways to solve this question there could be a way where we Rather than pushing tasks directly, we push a placeholder uh, promise in the queue and then we use that. So I tried a couple of ways. This one felt uh, most simple to me uh, for an interview setting where we have you know limited time and where we can explain our solution better. Um, as always, do like, share and subscribe if you see the value. Do, you know, share it with your friends, do, with your colleagues on social platforms so that, you know, I can make more videos and cover more topics. There are multiple uh, features on DevTools platform now. Use that. Uh, I'm, I've added a feature to filter out based on companies. You can also report in, uh, questions to me now. Plus, uh, there are links on the screen, uh, topmate.io uh, slash Yomesh Gupta. And for, if you want to book a session with me, I've, had, I've helped multiple people crack interviews of various companies and help them, you know, get packages more than 50 LPA. So if you want to be one of them, then you can book a session with me. If you just want to practice, you can use devtools.tech slash practice. This will give you a random question. There are my social links also, Twitter and LinkedIn, if you want to connect. So till next time, take care. See you. Bye bye.